I've been having a thought and really been thinking about something for quite some time. Very similar to the first video I did, or video I did long ago about why you shouldn't buy any more bushcrafting knives. And that is, you know, what it means to be a master woodsman and what it really means to come out here, practice self-reliance, and not just practice self-reliance, but be good at self-reliance. And there's a lot of people that have been commenting and talking about how they only use this knife or they only trust this knife or this brand or they only you know they see a knife that I do review on or they see you know a tool that I'm using and they don't see any kind of functionality or purpose that they could use that in their own life and while I'm not trying to say that you know every tool you need to be like oh yeah I can use that I can totally put that into my life and I need to buy one right now because that would definitely fly in the face of you know the philosophy of just buying one knife and using the hell out of it but it's come to me, especially as I have been, you know, using just one tool or just one knife, you know, almost religiously, that I didn't want to become too dependent or too hyper-focused on one knife. Because something that I do notice with Master Woodsmen, or what we would probably consider Master Woodsmen, such as Morris Kohansky and, you know, Dave Canterbury probably being one of them, if you do like him, you know, these people... They not only, such as Dave Canterbury, have created one tool options themselves, you can see through their videos and through their practices that they believe in being highly skilled with just about any tool or any knife. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I've been pressing myself and pushing myself to do a lot more videos with different kinds of tools and different kinds of knives. Because what I've learned, you know, in bushcrafting and survival is that we have a common objective that we want to get done, have the right skills to use whatever tool we have present, whether it's a saw, an axe, you know, a bushcrafting knife such as this battle lore, or other knives such as the Topps Tracker, you know, the Toma Field Knife, PLS K1, the list goes on and on. And what I realized is that I don't want to limit myself down to, or that it's, while it's a very important idea to have a, a handful of knives to really focus your skills on, that it is important to get out and use tools, not just as a justification to buy more. However, if you do love buying knives, like we kind of all do, you know, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to criticize that. However, you know, we really need to focus, or what I feel like, at least with myself, is that I need to focus on having multiple tools, learning how to effectively use all of them to affect a really good survival situation and, you know, being skilled. And what I found really interesting, though I've known this for quite some time, is there was a video produced way back where uh, Morris Kohansky was at one of his classes or a public event and all of his knives were laid out and he had a, you know, fairly large collection and many of the knives were very obscure. Some of them were, you know, along the lines of this battle lore, very traditional, you know, wood lore bushcrafting knives that we think of and that we love and I mean this is a great knife but he also had some obscure more survival tool like knives that didn't quite fit the right definition of a bushcrafting knife and what I found interesting is that he, he has such a skill that he can pick up any of these knives and immediately make them work for the most part I mean obviously you're you're just not going to get a k-bar to perform like a battle lore and you know that's why the battle lore exists because it does things that no other knife can do in the same kind of way, at least for the most part. So it is true that, you know, not every knife is going to perform the exact same way. However, in, really in order to become a master woodsman or a master bushcrafter, we really have to focus on expanding our horizons and not setting, at least for myself, you know, not setting a, a tool limit or saying, you know, this is the one knife that I swear by and, you know, I don't see any use in other knives or I don't see any new use in that tool, but rather take those tools and try to find use in them. Try to find how you can use it to affect survival. And I think that that makes me, uh, at least in my opinion, you know, when I try to force myself into that mindset, it makes me a better bushcrafter and a better survivalist because I can take what's around me and make survival happen. Whether it's, you know, the knife that I really wanted to use for bushcrafting or a knife that I would probably rather not want to use for bushcrafting. So that's kind of what I, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. So I think as a bushcrafter in progression of your skills and, you know, your abilities as a bushcrafter and survivalist is to be able to take one knife 
and master it, or at least get close to mastery, you know, understand how to use it, understand how to apply it into multiple situations, and then start expanding your horizons, you know, getting multiple knives, some smaller, some larger, some different blade profiles, some different edges, some things that you honestly don't think you could actually survive with, and, you know, push yourself and force yourself to survive with that tool, because that is going to make you a more well-rounded person, because as the old adage always goes, you know, we always say that, you know, the best survival knife you have is the one on you, but sometimes the best knife, the one that you have on you, isn't always the knife that you would rather survive or affect bushcraft with. So putting yourself into those situations prematurely and learning how to use these tools, such as a Tom Brown tracker, makes me a more effective bushcrafter, not necessarily than you guys. This is more of a personal, you know, learning experience for me, and it makes me a better bushcrafter than my old self, because my old self would have just simply sworn by, you know, a BHK battle or it, I would have simply sworn by, you know, a uh, Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. I would have just simply sworn by knives that I know how to use, that I trust, and, you know, I would have just called it at that. However, like I said, there's many situations that I've been put in where I didn't have the knife that I wanted to have in that situation. I didn't always, it wasn't always an option to, you know, use the best knife, you know, the BHK or, you know, the Topps Fieldcraft. They weren't always an option. So being able to be multi-rolled or multi-talented with tools not only is important for knives, but it also goes back to bushcrafting and being able to use other tools. You know, knowing when to use and how to use saws, knowing when and how to use axes, knowing when and how to use multiple different tools in your arsenal to make a self-reliance situation happen. And not only just happen, but be successful. So anyways, guys, this is just a personal rant and something I wanted to get off my chest to talk to you guys about because the biggest thing for me with bushcrafting and with this YouTube channel is it's all about not necessarily myself but just what I'm learning and what I'm experiencing and I wanted to share these experiences with you guys. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed this. God bless and I'm out.